Sierra Space's Dream Chaser space plane has cleared a critical test, moving closer to operational cargo missions for NASA. The reusable spacecraft will transport supplies to the ISS, International Space Station, under NASA's commercial resupply services contract. Big thing is perfecting the space, spacecraft's heat shield for multiple reentries. Uh, that's going to be a pretty crucial step and is going to need to ensure long-term reusability. Dream Chaser is expected to launch atop a ULA Vulcan Centaur rocket later this year, pending final safety reviews. They're almost there. It's great. I, mean, I always awesome. love the look of that Dream Chaser. Yeah. It's yeah. a bit like, more it's like a, a, dream a dream. It's a dream. Yeah, it, it, dream. it's a dream to look at. So this yeah. test demonstrated several capabilities of the Dream Chaser, including the ability to power on, to air cool, to exchange data with multiple powered payloads inside a pressurized cabin. It's mm. an important progression towards the planned missions of the Dream Chaser to resupply the ISS. So Sierra Space has proven they can provide power within certain voltage ranges. They can maintain the necessary environment for these different very specific payloads. They've ensured that all of the vehicle and payload data can be seen in the space mission and Sierra Space Missions control room in Colorado and also in the support control rooms at NASA down in Huntsville, Alabama. All fascinating stuff, all great proofs that say, hey, this is going to work. But now they've got to make sure that it can work again and again and again. And so I think what we're looking at is going to be how do we do that reusability, which I know we've already seen other companies working on, you know, Blue Origin, uh, of course, all SpaceX's success there. So yeah. it's something that's happening. But it's still a rel relatively new problem for sending stuff to space over and over again, and that's yeah. what they want to tackle. Yeah, I, I, it, it's that, and it's always the heat shield, isn't it? It's it's making mm -hmm. sure that heat shield durability is there. I remember the old shuttle, and that was constantly replacing tiles, and they were dropping off, and all sorts of things. So, as you say, it's multiple reentries. Um, the wear and thermal stress on the shield. Is going to be intense. Well, it's it, it's record breaking. So failures could are going to lead to safety risks, costly mm. refurbishments. So NASA's confidence in reusability is going to really impact the long term contract value. So they're going to they're going to refix that. I think a lot of this is looking at you know we talk about this time and time again, but you're sending something up into space. Once it's there, it's really hard to repair or make any changes to at least in our current yep. situation, and so. It does have to have that multiple re-entry coming back down. And of course, there will need to be quality and validation done probably between launches, right? So I think tackling that is going to be a lot of looking at some simulation and product validation methods. Yep. AI-driven simulation as well. I mean, really learning um, as it as it goes. Um, yeah, I think so. I think it'll be it. Um, get that heat shield fix through simulation validation and we're we're off and running that's what we do and then as in a quick aside that should not be televised uh i am just impressed that greg did not happen to mention our previous article